We start with anger from moderate Democrats, progressives, and the White House after conservative Democrat Joe Manchin put President Biden's agenda in jeopardy. This was a moment many on the left long feared and some warned of. The evenly divided Senate means any single Senate Democrat can torpedo this bill. And Manchin dropping a bomb Sunday, telling Fox News that he is against the bill. Today, top Democrats are trying to salvage some sort of deal. And the White House is softening its tone after releasing a blistering statement accusing Manchin of betraying the president and Congress. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki getting pressed today. Senator Manchin's version of events uh, sort of differ from the White House's version of events. Do you regard his $1.8 trillion proposal as a non- non-starter, given that it excludes child tax credit? Does the president think Senator Manchin has been negotiating in good faith? He has said that from the beginning. He continues to consider him a friend. New reporting late today that Biden and Manchin spoke last night. Biden seeking to restart talks on the plan for climate, pre-K, paid family leave, child tax credits, and more. Progressives are not holding back. I think uh, what Senator Manchin did yesterday represents such an egregious breach of the trust of the president. Well, I think he's going to have a lot of explaining to do to the people of West Virginia to tell them why he doesn't have the guts to take on the drug companies and lower the cost of prescription drugs, why he is not prepared to expand home health care. West Virginia is one of the poorest states in this country. We all knew that uh, Senator Manchin couldn't be trusted. Um, you know, the, the excuses that he just made, um, I think, are complete bull****. In a new interview, Manchin today claiming cryptically that the White House knows the real reason he's a no. I just got to the wit's end, and they know the real reason what happened. They won't tell you, and I'm not going to, because... Wait, 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 wait. You no. say, wait, wait. You said you, there is, they know the real reason. They're not going to tell us. You're not going to tell us. What do you mean? What's the real... Well, the so bottom line is there was, there was, there's basically, and it's staff. It's uh, staff driven. I understand staff. It's not the president. It's the staff. And they drove some things, and they put some things out that were absolutely in, in, inexcusable. And they know what it is, and that's it. Today, The Hill reporting that Manchin was upset with what he perceived as, quote, incivility from the White House, despite Biden and White House officials holding numerous private meetings with him. It's also new reporting Manchin had some private concerns he might prefer to keep private. Manchin reportedly thought parents would waste the monthly child tax credit payments on drugs. He reportedly worried West Virginians were abusing paid leave, using it to go hunting during deer season. Manchin also takes home $500,000 a year from coal investments, which could have been hit by the legislation. Now, West Virginia is ruby red, voted for Trump by 40 points, but 68% of West Virginians support Biden's Build Back Better plan. And here's what some of them said today. It's inconceivable that at Christmas time, especially, <laughs> that he would leave 350,000 children in West Virginia and their families without the certainty that they will have enough money to pay the Christmas bills. I can barely put gas in my car now as it is. So, I mean, anything, any other drastic steps that would alter West Virginia at all right now is just, it's kind of scary. Senator Schumer today vowing to still bring the bill to, a fl- to the floor for a vote in January. Other Democrats are eyeing a slimmed-down package that Manchin might support, as the party hopes the gut punch to Biden's agenda is not its death knell. Joining me now, Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist for The Washington Post, Eugene Robinson, Democratic strategist and former DNC communications director, Sochi Hinojosa. It is good to see you both. Eugene, I want to start with you. What does Manchin's bait and switch here mean, both for the Biden presidency and for the country? Well, first of all, this is not the first time Senator Manchin has moved the goalposts. And so, is you know, I, I wrote a new column on this and said his back must be sore for moving the goalposts so much. I mean, one of the things he's complained about is that it's not uh, it's not fully paid for over a full 10 years. And, you know, it would be if he hadn't um, put the kibosh on the modest tax increases for corporations and the wealthy that President Biden and um, the vast majority of Democrats in Congress wanted in the first place. But he didn't want, and so they're not in there. So there's not the money to pay for it all over 10 years. But that 
aside, uh, and also leaving aside the fact that it, it does strain credulity a bit to, uh, you know, say that they're not being nice enough to me at this point. After all the private meetings he's had with the president, he's been, uh, Lord knows they paid a lot of attention to Joe Manchin. All that said, where is Build Back Better now? And it's and it's it's not entirely clear. The White House hopes they will be able to start talking again. It's not first time Manchin has sounded like a no. It's the first time he came out and said, I'm definitely a no. So we'll see if that is any more permanent than uh, than his kind of knows that we've been getting all along. Not only did he say he was a no, he chose Fox News as his venue to announce that he was a no, which also feels <laughs> as though there is a lot of subtext there. Yeah. Perhaps not subtext, just text. Sochi, I want to play the sound just for text. you. <laughs> yes, from Speaker Pelosi earlier today. Get your thoughts on the other side. Take a listen. This will happen. It must happen. And we will do it as soon as we can. I have confidence that Senator Manchin cares about our country and that at some point, very soon, we can take up the legislation. I'm not deterred at all. Sochi, do you share her optimism that this bill isn't dead? Yeah, I never bet against Nancy Pelosi. That is one thing I've learned in the few years um, that she has been Speaker of the House, and this is the second time she's been Speaker. But I want to also mention, to your point about Joe Manchin and the child tax credit, I think that what you're going to hear from groups and members of Congress is how this benefits West Virginians. It's specifically in West Virginia, 90 percent, over 90 percent of children would benefit from a permanent child tax credit. In November alone, about 300,000 families would qualify for that. So when you're talking about, you know, whether this does anything for his constituents and why he's against it, I ask him to speak directly to his family members. And I think that in this whole argument, you're not hearing that this is about Joe Biden or Democrats or Joe Manchin. This is about the American people that are going to suffer because of one man's decision making. So, yes, Democrats will pass this. You know, it was so interesting to hear from those people in West Virginia on that exact point. Mm -hmm. Eugene, Senator Manchin has publicly said he's a no on the bill, claiming he doesn't want to add to the nation's mm -hmm. debt, also citing concerns over inflation. Yet, Goldman Sachs lowered its 2022 growth forecast after Manchin said no to Build Back Better. This isn't about the economy, Eugene. You know that. I know that. So what is his thinking? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem to be terribly clear thinking to me. Uh, there is, uh, for example, there's a lot of stuff in the Build Back Better package that Manchin not only wants but needs. For example, just one small example, there is an excise tax that, that goes to pay benefits to coal miners who are disabled because they have black lung disease. That, uh, the, the, the current tax rate expires on December 31st. If, if action is not taken, the amount of money available for that program is going to be cut in half. Now, how can you, how can you take that back to West Virginia? A program for coal miners with black lung, uh, and and say that um, because I, you know, they weren't nice enough to me or whatever the latest reason is. Um, they you name know, checked you, me, Eugene. They name checked me. Don't you understand how yeah, offensive that is? Yes. Well, you know, yes. Guess what? You've been name checked. I've been name checked. We've all been name checked uh, at, at various times, and that's kind of part of being a U.S. senator. But my my point is, there is stuff in there that he's got to have. So, how does he sort of climb far enough down from the ledge he's now on so that he can get stuff that he really needs for his constituents? Right. I mean, so gee, that is what Manchin is up against. Here's, as I understand it, and you'll tell me if I'm wrong, the challenge for Democrats, which is they still need his vote if this does go piecemeal. They still need his vote for voting rights, for filibuster reform. They would need his vote if there were to be a Supreme Court vacancy and then a nominee. What position does all of this put other Democrats in? Well, Democrats are frustrated, and rightfully so, because they want to deliver for the American people, and they promised it, and they ran on it, and they plan on running again, again uh, on it again in 2022. And so, yes, they will have to come back to the table. I think that you were you heard in a very aggressive White House, but at the same time, they understand. Listen, he put a proposal forward. We um, don't have to go back to square one, but yes, there are so, a lot of things that we want to deliver for the American people that are non-starters for us. And so it's going to take longer than we expected. 
I don't necessarily know it's going to be done at the end of January here, but the hope is that he comes back to the table. We figure out what he is willing to pass, pass as much as possible to help the American people, and then figure out what else we can do to provide relief for families in other ways.